Well, it's a be beautiful Monday morning in May. The sun's shining and it's already 20 degrees outside. So Lucy and I have thought today that we'll go inside and shelter from the sun. And this morning we're meeting with local award-winning artist, Leo Davey. Good morning, Leo. Good morning. And we're in the middle of uh, Leo's gallery at the moment. Now, it's my first visit to this particular gallery. I seem to have been to every other gallery in the whole of Exmoor, Somerset and the Southwest. But yeah, I, I've landed in somewhere that actually I can already see a lot of the, his work on the walls. And I know, um, Lucy, you've got quite a lot of Leo's work, haven't I have, you? Yes, I have. Good morning. <laughs> I have. Leo actually did a commission for us quite early on um, of Pilgrim Corner and the Sweet Shop when the barn was being converted. Home so. Home, people will see that. I think that must have been in about 2016, would that make yeah, sense? That right. yeah. yeah, so a lot of our guests will be familiar with that because there's a print, a frame print, well, you remember, we, I've got the original at home and then there's a frame print in every cottage. Mm. So they're, they're there for people to see. So if anyone um, sees these beautiful pictures of the front, and there's also on our website, then you'll know it's Leo. Um, you can't always, um, get into the gallery, can you? Because it's um, you, you're not open all the time. No, my, my opening hours are what are they? Eleven Artistic. till four. Eleven till four. <laughs> Eleven till four. Tuesday to Saturday. That's right. And if so the sun's shining, I occasionally shut up. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's not. It's not great. Practice, that's the beauty yeah. of being in Exmoor, isn't it? Yeah. And Minehead yeah. near the sea and everything. Yeah. And what's the name of this little road for people um, to look for? The, the address is actually uh, Friday Street because it's on the corner, but it's yeah. I, I would say Quirk Street. I would mm. say it's brackets Quirk. Quirk Street. Yeah. So it's a little um, off street, isn't it? Off of Friday Street. So we've talked to Jazz quite a lot at the Ivy Room. So it's all in the same area, easy to find, walkable distance from the cottages. And it's it's small but perfectly formed. This gallery, yes, yes. there's a lot yes, in here, a lot to talk about. Mm. Yeah, there certainly is. I mean, a lot of the work which I'm familiar with from Leo's perspective is the travel prints that right. you've done. So yeah. the railway travel prints, which I think anyone that's visited this part of the mm. world will have seen the cards and the prints yeah. uh, around and about. But as soon as I walked in, I was grabbed by a particular picture on the wall, which I'm staring at now, and for some reason. Uh, I'm not looking at you, Leo, or you, Lucy. I'm staring at this picture. It's really captivated me. Can you just tell me a little bit about that one, Leo? Um, it's it's a painting of um, Bangkok, so it's a cityscape. Um, I called it Where the Wild Things Aren't um, because it's kind of uh, a hotel bedroom sort of turning into a cityscape, so there's a reflection of a bed and a table and there's a... TV screens, even my head in there as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so so where the where the wild things aren't refers to where the wild things are. It's a, a children's book, I'm sure many of you will know it. Um, yeah, where the room where Max's room turns into a forest. So our, our bedroom is turning into a cityscape. Mm. Yeah. And what's interesting is it's a very different style to perhaps to the things that people will know you for, like the watch it and. The, the Minehead and the Dumpster yeah, ones, yeah. Um, and also the wildlife ones that you do in the other landscapes. Yeah. But it's not that dissimilar to this lovely one of the Bridgewater Fair, yes. which we were looking at earlier, which mm. you sold. Yes. Um, which is absolutely stunning. The detail in there of the, the roller coaster and the, the big tops, and it's just, again, really beautiful, lots of detail against this. So it's very vibrant colours against this big black sky. Yeah. And yeah. our guests may not know that Bridgewater, which is not a pretty place to drive through, let's be fair, oh, has this amazing <laughs> carnival and fair. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very famous, uh, particularly the carnival. I think mm. I've never been to the carnival. No, mm. I haven't for, either. Considering it's so, so close. But I'm so, determined to go. The yeah. carnival's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and any, any guests that are staying in that November, early November mm. period is yeah. to get to come and see the carnival. You can also get to see the same at Western Supermare as well. And... Uh, just seeing it on the streets of Bridgewater is amazing. And what you've done here at the fair is captured the colour of it because yeah. that's the thing with the carnival. It just is such a colourful, it noisy is. Is. parade. And then, then contrasted against the, the enormous expanse of black at the top. And, and the painting is framed at a jaunty angle, which is kind of unusual. People, it's, yeah, it's just enough to know it's deliberate. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think. I yeah. Hope. Well, I did ask you, didn't I? I said, do you, is it meant to be wonky? But it works because you feel 
that you are, so this is on the floor at the moment because it's ready to be shipped, but I'm um, looking down on it and I felt like I was in the big top looking down. Right. So it's, 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 it does from, work. From the, from the Ferris wheel. Yeah, mm. exactly. So the, the, the Ferris wheel, this, that's what I meant, sorry. Yeah, the title of this um, painting is called Revolution Temporarily Suspended. Yeah. Possibly a bit. No, no, it's, <laughs> no. But it's, it's, it was, um, I, I tend to work from photos. Yeah. You, you, well, you can imagine I didn't paint this no, whilst no. on the Ferris wheel with no. my daughter. But yeah, it's, it's a combination of maybe three or four photos all mm. joined together to get the whole expanse of the... But what I love about it is it shows the diversity of your work. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we've picked on two that aren't actually Exmoor. Mm. But 90% of the gallery is full of landscapes of places yeah. or, you know, beaches yeah. and um, wildlife that people would perhaps recognise if they come in here and they've been... You know, they're on their fourth or fifth day of their break. Mm. Yeah. There are very um, few straight lines in my other paintings, whereas the two you've chosen there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, architectural, yes, I true. guess. And uh, I was reading on, on the website, you, you studied at Falmouth uh, Uni, yeah. and your work, it, it, you, you make a point, I think, on the website of saying that you, you don't use, a, or you're not a, a sort of a single media sort of artist. That, yeah, you know, I, I, I jump about all over the place. I guess, I guess um, uh, the thing I'm known for, I would, I would say, is, is the watercolour. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I go back to that time and time again. But yeah, my, my work varies. Um, so there's oils. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it's mixed media. So this is the daft question, but how do you look at a subject and say to yourself, that's a watercolour, that's an oil, that's a crayon? You know, how do you decide what media to choose? <laughs> I don't know. Um, don't know. Well, no. <laughs> uh... Like this watercolour here, which I, I actually love it because it's on a piece of ply and all the... You can see where you've mixed the colours on the side. Yeah. I, I mean, I actually think the whole thing would be great in a frame. Yeah. Where you can see how these these works these, these are works in progress. Yeah. So these these will be in frames. So these, yeah, if everything starts on a board. So this this is this is on paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the paper's stretched onto a board, so this will be cut off and framed. Because I just think the whole yeah. I love the board as well. Yeah. So I can people see often what say that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a gate. Where is this? Some estuary somewhere? Uh, Paul Lockwood. Paul Lockwood, Paul Lockwood. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Particularly high tide. Yeah. Yeah, no one about. Very Lovely. early morning. Yeah. I had to walk right round the the beach part across the bridge because mm. this was all blocked off the normal path. Mm. Yeah, it's an exceptional. I didn't recognise it because it is so yeah. high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just that one building that I recognise that, that build, that big building on the right hand side looking yeah. back. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful lovely. picture. The purple in there, yeah. is, and the orange is gorgeous. Yeah, and everything's exaggerated. Yeah, so I love that. There's a lot of watercolor, but there's also oil, and these are a bit more. I guess you'd call that like contemporary. Um, green. Um, yeah, obviously, particularly abstract. This one, this is possibly the most abstract um, for you. Um, it's a uh, yeah, a, a, a mass of greens and. Yeah, a tiny splodge of red. But yeah, it started off, it's a painting of an oak tree. Yeah. So it started off as quite a traditional painting of an oak tree. Um, and it's gone through so many stages. I, I was thinking of doing a blog about it on my website because I took photos at each stage. Um, and yeah, it was done over a period of about two years and I just wasn't satisfied with it. But I've, it's been at this stage and I don't think I'm going to do any more to it. And this for is quite one of the biggest ones, isn't it, that you've yeah. got here that we're yeah. looking at? This is yeah. it's what, a, three what, foot square or something. Yeah, a metre ten more. by a metre ten. Yeah. Do you like it? I love it. Right. I, I, re I love the big expanse of green mm. and the fact it's not one green. And you, what I really like about paintings is when whatever style they're in, you look at them and you see something new and it's been on your wall for a year. Yeah. And then you go back and you, oh, never know. Oh, that means yeah. that you know you can start thinking, and also your mood can change when the, what you see in an mm. image, can't it? Yeah. No, I really love it. I I just like how you come in here and ev there's so much, there's so many different styles. There's, you know, I challenge anyone to come in here and say I don't like, I don't mm. like your style because it's sure actually so quite cool. hard to tie your style down. Yeah. Yeah. So, so pe people come in here expecting to see more of this um, sort of quite traditional landscape stuff. Mm. So this this one, yeah, it gets lots of and comments. What and kind of people, people do know. come in? Because I'm interested. You know, who's the art buyer in Minehead? What what are we um, talking about? 
People from Butlins tend not to make their way up here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah as, as I'm, as they I'm don't quite... go past Weatherspoons. That's the thing. Yeah, if you were yeah. outside Weatherspoons. Yeah, yeah. but pe- people t- um, so I'm, I'm quite off the beaten track. You are. Yeah, so so people tend to find out about me. And I don't know come. on the backs of cards mm. all over mm. the place in various other ways. Yeah, so so people that yeah people don't tend to stumble across me. No, you need it's a destination, isn't it? Yeah, you you got to know yeah. about you. That's why I'm hoping more people will will look at you know the artwork in the cottages and online and see it and they'll they'll start to recognise your style and mm. then they'll actually come in because it's just a lovely place to be even if you don't buy anything yeah it's just got a nice atmosphere mm-hmm. hasn't it I yeah, can it see David kind of uh, look because you haven't been here before no it, I mean I, I'm quite a I love to be in a gallery. I love to be in a quiet space. You know, that's me. I'm sort of one of these quiet, reflective sort of right, people. Right. And it's interesting is that I have a, a very similar piece to that. Uh, right. Not in this country, unfortunately, but it was a commission. I commissioned it from an artist up in the Cotswolds. And it's incredibly similar to that. And I'd love right, you right. to have a look at that piece. Do you mean piece. in style or colour? Or? Just everything. It's really, really it's oh, really, oh, yeah, oh, right. it's oh, really interesting. It. Mel Cross is the artist. Mel and Cross. and right. Mel is a very good friend of mine. And uh, it's remarkably similar. And I wish she was here now to see that because she'd be blown away as well the picture the the piece that she created was actually of a person which then morphed more into a right, right. into a, a nature scene which is quite interesting that you started off it right, said yeah, it, it yeah, started off yeah. with a tree and then became more abstract more contemporary yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what happened uh with mel's commission it was yeah it's really quite spooky but no for me lucy's right the rest of the gallery feels the sort of space I could just come mm. and spend the morning. So the thing um, that's interesting to me is, I, you know, I imagined in this podcast we would talk a lot about Exmoor and right, uh, which we will. Um, but that's I can see there's there's more going on than Exmoor. And you're a minehead boy, aren't you? I moved there when I was six, so yeah. I, I would say yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so, so you're a local. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you did you start doing drawing? Bef- you know, at, at primary school, were you always well, my parents drawing? and my sisters were all artists, right. so I couldn't get away from them. No, basically, okay. yeah. And on, on holidays, we'd take sketchbooks and be drawing on the beaches and lovely. Got, yeah, sketchbooks filled with headlands. <laughs> um, yeah, we used to go to Wild Pear Beach down in Coo Martin. Right. Okay. So when we. Um, I lived in London. Yeah. Um, so we used to holiday in Coo Martin, which is kind of how, how it drew us down here. Um, but yeah, we, we'd, we'd, we'd draw all the time and continued to do so throughout my childhood. So did you all think that was going to be a career? Because it's quite tough, I would think, to make a career out of art. Uh, yeah, well, I, I studied illustration at um, university. So for books and things. Yeah, yeah, children, children's book illustration. And um, for years, I, I, I wrote and illustrated books and never quite got my feet off the ground. Right. And didn't quite enjoy the whole process as well. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. Um, had sort of nine to five jobs until, I, until about 2008 and was made redundant. And it was uh, the kick up the bomb I needed, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I was sort of thrown into it and it was a do or die time and I yeah, chose to do. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. And yeah. you went, so you went to Falmouth, and was there a particular thing you specialised in there? Was that yeah, that, that was uh, that was children, the children's, children's illustrations. Books, yeah. So was that like yeah. um, pen drawings or watercolours? Um, it was it was uh, watercolour mainly. So a lot more dip pen, dip pen and Indian ink, um, which I don't use so much now. I, I use Indian ink a lot, but now with a brush. Um, but yeah, I used to used to do lots of characters and yeah, lo- loads and loads of books. That are still still on the back burner. I'm mm. gonna um, yeah re- revamp them and see if I can get them off the ground. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like a, a decade of of trying to get my um, work published, but never quite succeeded. Mm. Yeah, not not quite sure why. I think they're pretty. They're, they're good. Yeah, are they? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Well, I, I I say they're good. You know, they they, they didn't get snapped up. Um, but 2008 was. A recession. It was. It yeah, was pretty well, crunch. Why it was mm. made for time. Exactly. Mm. You know, yes. that was the that was the it finance, was time, wasn't it? Yeah. The banking recession. Now yeah. we're going into a, a different kind of recession. But um, yeah, that sounds like something you should be doing because there is a jigsaw here. Yes. I mean, that makes me think of. No, I mean, I would say this is quite hard for kids, mind you. But could yeah, be done. Yeah, very, could be done. 
Yeah. How many birds in this? Uh, 89. 89. Uh, 89. <laughs> birds of the world. Yeah. All sorts of colours. Yeah, yeah. Is this was a, an idea um, from my daughter because I've painted a lot of um, birds in the past, mm. generally in boxes for yes, some reason. Yes, you've got your box ones here with the puffin and yeah, the jay. Yeah, the I, I see them as being alive rather than taxidermy yeah. mm. specimens, as as I do with this. And you can see they're in, in rainbow formation. Mm. But this this puzzle is now not available from my website because it's going to be published um, by a, um, a puzzle company, which I. Um, but anyway, they're, they're, <laughs> they'll, um, yeah, so, they so I can't sell them anymore. So you're no longer, yeah, yeah. we're very familiar yeah. with rights, aren't we, David? We certainly oh, are, right. yes. Yeah. yeah, so you're no longer okay. allowed to sell it. But you can sell the print, I assume. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's, it's only for three years. I think it's it amazing, be, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't it be lovely to have one of those in the cottages for our guests to uh, have the a go at? Yeah, yeah, we should. We mm. should absolutely do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. I, I've got to say, is you know, for me, I'm not a huge fan of wildlife uh, pictures. Right. It, yeah, I'm much more colour focused, right. and that, that's why I keep on coming back to Bangkok behind me, which I'm going to turn my back on because otherwise I'll ignore you. And you know, I really like the fact that you do exaggerate the colours yeah. in in a lot yeah. of your work. I've got to ask, is you know, if you're driving along or out on your bike or walking or whatever, and you see a particular view with a particular, I don't know, sun setting or rising or whatever, do you immediately say, right, I need to capture that? Yeah, how, do you, do, how does your work do. get inspiration? I, 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 I tend to work from photos. Yeah. Um, and I take all of my photos on an iPhone, so I've always got my camera. Mm. So I, any any walk, any drive, I'm, I'm yeah, often stopping and annoying the hell out of the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got to take a photo of this, yeah, yeah. And then do they sort of um, formulate in your mind as you're doing things? Like my partner is a sign writer and he, he um, you know, he actually paints hand, yeah. hand signs as yeah. well as he does them on computer. And I see a lot of, you know, I'll, I'll be in the kitchen tidying up and I find something with a sign drawn on it, you know, right. in the back right. with like a crayon or one of my Sharpies and I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's obviously working on something. And I see that process, it chugs away. I do a bit like that when I'm writing. Right. It doesn't come to you, you don't sit down and go, right, now I'm going to draw the Paul Lock Weir. It sort of eats away in the back of your brain, doesn't it? And then it yes, comes out of your hands. Sometimes, because most of, most of the um, paintings I do are from um, photos. And, and I do a lot of work on the photos before, so I'll, I'll move things about right, in okay. Photoshop yeah. um, to get the composition right. And, and I often work from a um, combination of three or four photos. So that's to get where you're doing in. your yeah, that's, random I, I used to keep sketchbooks a lot, but yeah. I don't so much mm. anymore. That's interesting. Which is, which is a shame, I think. I used to love keeping a sketchbook, and so you don't have the, the sort of thought process documented, yeah. which, which is a real shame. Because, yeah, I've got, I've got well, boxes and boxes of sketchbooks. When you were talking else. about this and yeah. doing a blog on the, the abstract one and showing people the different stages of yeah. it, I think that is fascinating mm. because often as consumers, if you like, we don't see what goes into a painting. No. You might look at it and go, oh my God, that's 700 pounds. Or uh, sometimes this happens with plants, you know, and I'm doing right. gardening, you see an olive and you're like, how is that 1,200 pounds? <laughs> and then you have to think it's 25 years old. Mm. So right. someone's looked after it yeah. for 25 yeah. years, you and know, we've got to do. That's why it's, it's a... Yeah. And I think sometimes the process of things, people are very interested in that. And we yeah. don't always see it from art because also a lot of the art people are familiar with is like Monet or Picasso and they're dead. You know, they're, yeah. a lot of their things aren't available. Yeah. You can sometimes see them if you go to a specialist gallery. Yeah. And I think that would be amazing to yeah. see it. And these are so complex. You know, they look, it looks simple in a way. If you, you know, you've simplified the image. Yeah. But the painting is so complex with the colours and the way you've done that. This is Kiel, isn't yeah. it? Uh, um, Jurassic. Hellwell. Hellwell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That um, that again would be lovely to see, like how you layer it yeah. and build it up. Um, my my Instagram um, feed is generally uh, photos of paintings in progress. So yeah. what? Tell people what that is. So, so can... what my Instagram yeah. uh, Leo at. Uh, what was it Leo Davies Studio Gallery? And it's D A V E Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll put all the all those details into the meta description, so people right. who are listening to this just scroll down on your screen, and you'll find all the links then to uh, Leo's social media uh, and to your website 
as well. Yeah, yeah so, so, so the process is um, I, I lay down the Indian ink first. Um, so, so that's a, a black permanent ink. And that, that goes on. So all, all, all the tone, tonal work is, or most of the tonal work, is done with the black Indian ink. Um, and it's applied with a brush um, in various uh, dilutions. So some of it's grey, and then and some of it's just um, pure black Indian ink. And then that dries. I, could, I often aid the drying with a hairdryer. Um, but once it's dry, then it's set and you can't move it. It doesn't. It stays there, and then you can put watercolor washes over it. So, so some of the if, if there's a grey, um, the grey can then have um, you know a red put on, and then it will become a dark brown. Um, and yeah, you just yeah the the, the watercolor is very 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 loose, whereas um, all the hard work is done with the with the black Indian ink, and it's the same with all of these paintings, like the Bangkok one for example. Mm. Yeah, that that's all. And I dread yeah, to ask, is. how long did that take? That particular one, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, they're done over. Uh, that was probably done over a period of two weeks, and that might be five hours a day for yeah. two weeks. Wow. And, um, yeah, and, and and this this landscape next to it, that would have been done, um, yeah, in an afternoon. I and guess. would you work on different styles concurrently, or do you stick uh, on one, get it finished, and? I do tend to work on one at one at a time at the moment. Um, if I'm doing a series of paintings, all the same size and of a similar subject, I will sometimes do all the black Indian ink first. Yeah. Yeah, just it's just just a, an easier process. And if your mind is um, thinking black Indian ink, then you know it sort of makes it easier. And do you have a particular location that inspires you more than another, or is it is it a mixture of things? Is it location and time of day and light um. and a, pl a place I revisit time and time again is um, North Hill, um, so in, in Minehead, because mm. um, my I grew up um, on top of North Hill, so North Hill was my back garden, I guess. Yeah, really? So, so yeah, I used to go up there all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing North Hill, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's woodland and moorland, and yeah, the rugged coast path, mm. and yeah, Selworthy Beacon. Yeah, but but the but the view. Um, that's uh, my favourite view on North Hill is if I'm looking over Bossington Beach. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I, I often get guests drive yeah. up there, mm. and yeah. I say, "Well, they say to me, where does it go?" And I say, "No way. It goes to the view." <laughs> and you turn around, yeah. come back. Yeah, it's, it's quite unique it. in that sense. You have to. I think it's about four and a half miles. Yeah. Um, yeah, on the way to nowhere. Isn't mm. it? It's yeah. Not, yeah it I sometimes do. think I go there in the early evenings, particularly, um, and we take the kids, and they, you know, they get out and, and take photos or walk around. And Mark and I do the same thing. What's really funny is I look at the other cars and I think, I wonder if they're all people staying at my cottages. Because yeah. <laughs> I've said to them all, you must go there early mm -hmm. right. and watch mm -hmm. the sun come down. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do go up there. Yeah. You drive along that road, don't you? And you feel road to nowhere. Where on earth? Yeah. We well, I, I, I've done it so many times. I take it for you granted. I guess. Yeah. 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 We call it the bunny rabbit road because we know... Right there's a field that's always absolutely full of rabbits it's like the rabbit highway right before you get onto the that open bit it's a farm farmer's field yeah but yeah it's lovely i would urge people to go up there uh, yeah. the rugged coast path that's what my um one of my favorite paths this is on the rugged coast path. Do you know the rugged coast path? no it's um most, most people go along the sort of uh the middle of north hill i'd call it yes but i'm um, on the the north side the seaside there's a path that wiggles right wiggles its way around okay yeah, it's, it's, it's quite um, rugged. rugged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I run it as well quite often and very rarely see anyone on it, mm. which is lovely as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's one of the lovely things about Exmoor, I have to say. Yeah, uh, it? unspoiled. It's unspoiled, yeah. yeah. And people come and, and love the fact that it isn't really busy. Yeah, yeah. And, I think we all appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Particularly in the height of the summer when everyone else is yeah. talking about crowded beaches and block roads, is we can still yeah. get around in We've our part of the world. Still got the block roads. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like, at any time of year. <laughs> yeah. road works. So, is there a particular topic? I mean, you obviously do. There's a nature, the outdoors. We see a lot of that. You do people. Like you've got your daughter. There's yeah. one of your son, isn't there, in the shower? That, that's all. That's also my um, daughter, in fact. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. I'm not. Look, there's one that one. Um, which one. is the one? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, this is won the um, Sunday Times watercolour competition in yeah. 2019. What's really amazing about that is, and I'm, is, you know, I'm no expert, but the water on the glass, I do not know how you did it. It's hard to see at card size. But yeah. Let me show David. Can you see the condensation <laughs> God, yeah. and running I've got, I've got the hands down? It is, I would really urge people to look at this. I mean, it, it won the award for a reason. It really is incredible. I just think it's so. I mean, again, oh, very. Oh, different. look at thirty nine percent. My God. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a painting of my um, daughter, sort of dragging her fingers across <laughs> the um, window of a shower. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's there's lines and very drips complex. and tiles. There. Yeah, it's a yeah. And it's a sort of everyday image that we probably all see and yeah, don't really yeah. think is, is worthy it, it's, of a portrait. It's, it's one of the few paintings that I've kept. Yeah, is it? Mm. Not, not for sale, that one. Yeah. yeah. And this one here on the bridge with the padlocks. Mm. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my daughter again. It's in um, Graz in Austria. Right. Yeah, a couple of years back. Yeah. So they're not all Exmoor? No, no. <laughs> no that's a Spanish, Spanish ruin up there with poppies. Uh-huh. Um, I struggle to find one. <laughs> oh, there's a that's that's um, an island called Komak in uh, Thailand. Uh, that looks like we've got. But they Florence up there. Yes, the we Mercado definitely yeah. recognise Exmoor in these, and actually a lot of them have the name, don't they, on incorporated in the image? Yeah, yeah. You see, there's another one that grabs me that I keep on coming back to, Minehead Beach, right. up there. Yeah. And again, it's the colour for me, mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, orange oranges are a colour that triggers me. You know, I really get orange. It's something that makes me feel a lot brighter, a lot, you know, healthier in, in the head. And that really, uh, that really works for me, that one. Yeah. I like that. So yeah, you know. and that's again that's North Hill, mm. and you've got the rocks in the foreground. I mean, there's not actually an enormous amount of beach on there. No, no, no. no. But yes, yeah, there's, like, there's a couple there. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. If you look closely, they're taking a selfie. Oh, so I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to see that photo. It'd be quite, quite nice. yeah. <laughs> it'd be nice, nice. What time of year did you take that picture? Um, it's winter, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so the sun sun sets a lot further. Um, yes. Yeah. Left. Yeah, that way <laughs> on the left. Foot. Yeah, it's got that wintry sky as well, it has, hasn't it? Yeah, and there's something about orange, I suppose, because of fire and you know a wood burning stove type orange, isn't there? That makes you think it's it's wintry. But it, yeah. it's still. Look, I often look at North Hill and convince myself I'm in the Amalfi Coast right. <laughs> when it's lit up at night. Yeah, you just have to ignore pretty. the colour of the sea it's and the less. Cold that yeah. You have to ignore, <laughs> it? It's November and it's cold. Well, I think it's definitely worth people coming in here. They can just come in, can't they? Can just yeah, yeah. In. People are always very apologetic about um, coming in. It's because you're painting here, anything. isn't it? But, but no, I love, I love it when people come in. And, and there are all cards. Well. You don't have to buy yeah. a print or an original artwork to come in, do you? And books too, books which I've got my eye on. Yeah. No jigsaw. No, no. Yeah. Too frustrating for a mine, mine like mine. But <laughs> uh, a book would be quite nice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely wonderful, wonderful. And I've got to ask you about the the, the travel prints or the the illustrations that yeah. you did. I mean, that for me is a real de departure in some ways. You know, the the that that's your own original designs sort of inspired yeah. by old travel prints. That's, that's right. Yeah, um, there's a, an artist called Frank Newbold. Yeah, um, an old old travel poster yeah. artist from like the nineteen thirties and forties. Yeah, so inspired by that, I did um, yeah one for every station uh, from yeah Minehead to Bishop's Lydia. I think there were nine of them. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that was a few, few years back. But they. I was going to say, when did you do those? Do you remember? Um, I would say two thousand and twelve. Right. Yeah. Around that sort. I mean, of time. they are still pretty iconic. You see those a lot. Yes. Yeah. And they sell them down at the the railway stations. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I love the taglines that you've done. Um, on, you know, it's yeah. just the, the whole thing, they really work. Yeah. And in Pilgrim Corner, we've got the whole set in a line. 
Um, from the we, postcard pack, yeah. Yeah, um, and we did have uh, um, we did have words about you know which came where. <laughs> It's quite hard to remember which stations go where after you pass oh, right. the familiar bit, you know, Minehead, right. Dunster, Blue Anchor, you know, and then you're like, oh, where does where so, does Tagumba go? Mm. Um, so yeah, railway fans will definitely know them, but they they are lovely in their own right. I've got the Minehead and the Dunster one um, in my front room. I just love them, I, the, the lime greens and the mm. reds, and you know, they're just they're gorgeous. So that and they're great as cards. So people should definitely come in and have a look at the the card uh, display on the way in. There's some funny ones there as well. Yeah. Um, and but you are often working in here, aren't you? Yeah. So when, whenever I go, I'm, I'm always always painting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So people are welcome to come and see what yeah, I'm up to. Have a chat. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's brilliant, Leo. Thank you. It's um, yeah. It started my Monday off in a much brighter way to not usual so uh, yeah that's really good thank you very we much we normally have a meeting on a monday no <laughs> yeah. we don't no, no we joking. don't no 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 it's uh, no it's I great i was going to ask you quickly is there would you say there was a sort of minehead art community mm. here you know is because there is a bit of an exmoor yeah, thing yeah there, there, there but... are lots lots of artists as um yeah yeah uh, do you think it's it's becoming a bigger thing or well, there's Somerset Arts Week each year, so it's a kind of um, a gauge as to how many artists there are about. And mm. yeah, they all, all come out of the woodwork during yeah. Somerset Arts Week. And when which is that? Is in September. September, okay. Yeah, so and end of September, early like October. Do you take part in that? I do, yeah, I have done every year for yeah. like, since 2009, I think. Mm. Yeah, so, okay. so a long time. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do something on that. We'll yeah, encourage definitely. people to come and we'll, we'll post about it. So yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. I mean, Somerset Arts Week, Somerset Arts Week's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. Fab. And I guess with, with East Key in Watch It, there yeah, is a bit yeah. more of a focus on arts and crafts in this yes. part of the world now, yes. rather than just driving past and going to St Ives and, and you know, other sort of, um, you know, places in Cornwall which are all about art or, you know, call themselves mm. all about well, art. they have galleries, don't they? Yeah. Don't have... We just don't seem to talk about it very much. And it's quite nice to see East Key actually doing yeah, something yeah, about it. Yeah, they're doing amazing stuff out there. Yeah. Great. Thank well, you. Well, I'm looking forward to coming back. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, just amazing. Thanks very much, Leo. Pleasure. Thanks for your time. You.